All right, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Brianna. I'm the Teen Services Librarian here at the Berkeley Public Library. Today we are joined by three amazing artists who, are, who will share how they utilize zines as a creative medium. They will also give us the opportunity to ask questions about zine making and their work. Shout out to our Adult Services Librarian, Casey, who will help us monitor the chat as they build questions in our Q&A session. Um, I'd also like to express many thanks to the friends of Berkeley Public Library for their support in today's program. Uh, before I introduce our artists, here's a reminder that the Berkeley Public Library is hosting three more zine making programs this week. Uh, and we're all celebrating International Zine Month. So you can see here that there's lots of opportunities to make zines at your libraries this week. Uh, we will also have the links to these events on our website. You feel free to uh, scan the QR codes uh, as you watch this video, wherever you may be, and learn more about those events there. Uh, we will also share the links in the chat, which I believe everybody has access to, so you can like view it there. Okay, so let's see. Um, this is just a reminder uh, for folks who want to ask questions, like specifically to somebody on the panel or like to the whole panel as a group. Um, either above or below, you're going to see like this icon that says Q and A. Uh, please submit your questions there so we can make sure we see them and our panelists hear them and can answer them. So uh, let's see. So now I'm super, super honored to introduce the artist in today's presentation. I'm just gonna read a short biography of each artist and then I'm gonna hand it over to them, which is what we're all here for. So Krusty Wheatfield is a cartoonist and multimedia artist based in Oakland, California. The power of lines and shapes to create stories and connection has guided her throughout her career from getting a master's degree in comics research in France to curating monthly art shows from inside of a classic car showroom in Oakland. She aims to draw people together in space, literally and figuratively, and see what new situations arise from unpredictable combinations. Woo woo, Christy Wheatfield in the house. We also have Elise Bernal, pronoun she, they, is an artist who works in libraries and has helped organize and support Long Beach and Orange County Zine Fest. Her recent art centers around the realities and tender moments of pain, grief, and death. She hopes by sharing knowledge and creating space to explore these experiences, others can gain tools to understand and navigate them or find a small moment of safety and support. She wants to give a shout out to her mom, whose life and death continues to inspire her. Yay, shout out to Lise, who's here, woo woo. And next we have Ziba Perez, is a librarian by day, DJ by night, and zinester for life. Ziba helped create the first ever circulating zine collection at the LA Public Library in 2017. Previously, Ziba was at the Long Beach Public Library, where she helped create the first ever circulating zine collection there in 2015. Ziba was a co-organizer of the Long Beach Zine Fest and is now a co-organizer of the LA Zine Fest. Woo woo, Ziba's here today. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to hand it over to our artists, starting with Krusty Wheatfield. Yeah. OK. Awesome. Hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, so I am Krusty Wheatfield. And everything kind of started when I, I saw the movie Harriet the Spy, and I was like, this girl just looking at everything, taking notes, it looked so fun, it felt like she was like learning the secrets of the world. So there's me on the left, I'm pointing at my screen, like you know where I'm pointing. Me on the left in the photo is when I had my like spy notebook, I would go and draw everything, it was kind of a way to like I don't know, understand what I was observing in this world that didn't kind of make sense and where I was this weirdo and I needed to take notes for myself. And then um, next to that notebook, up top the composition book is my gigantic crate of all my field notebooks now, because now I still carry notebook everywhere all the time. I have so many of them. So I always love drawing, taking notes. Um, 
And I feel like it was always a way to like sort of stand up to power structures or make fun of things I didn't like so much about the environment I was in, like on the left or on the right hand side, there's P Kelly's pink sock, which was like my first zine that was like this anti-popular thing that was like, oh, popular people lose their socks when they're on their feet. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. And I thought it was very funny and it felt cool to share it with my friends and I don't know imagine a world where it was, there was some kind of justice or something and then yeah I was drawing my religion teacher but then getting lots of like attention for that it was really funny to people and I love music and zines have been a way to connect with music because I do these uh, biography comics with this person Vale I've made and yeah, everything kind of started with just drawing for myself and then everything got more exciting when I started making zines and sharing them with people. And we can go to the next slide to see the zines I've made. So next, or can I do that? No, I can't. What else? I hope everyone can understand me. I can mumble sometimes, so, okay. Yeah, these are an assortment of the zines I have made. Um, on the left, there's like this a comic adaptation about the San Francisco housing crisis um, that I did a long time ago. And that was really crazy. It was my first big book and I drew it all in two months. And I really, I like it. And I want to do more things like that. Um, so yeah, there's like nonfiction adaptations, things like that. And then my interview comics that are about kind of San Francisco punk and V Vale, who has been in San Francisco since 1965, I think, and has seen all the countercultures rise, fall, transform, adapt, all that stuff. So I like to collaborate with people. My first zines, yeah, were um, on the right, there's like four zines and those are all group publications that were under the name come find out and that was really fun i just like met all my people and wanted to have gatherings with them to celebrate the release of the zine and there'd be music there and it was like oh my god this little piece of paper is actually like an expanding universe if you count all the things that come with it and then the collaborations and the new people you meet and I don't know. It all made me very excited then and still does now. And let's see, my personal stuff. Sorry, my shoes falling off. Ah. Um, I also like to just publish my own drawings, doodle zines that I call squander lust um, that are, yeah, that are kind of like these notebooks turned into, that's a big one, turned into like a best of, of my, what I've seen and heard people doing, because I just like the world and the weird situations that I find myself in sometimes. Uh, I think we can go to the next, next slide. Um, this is a newsletter I make with my partner, Stephen. Um, it's called the Jeffrey's Tube. And this one we made while at a residency in this weird town in France. So it's half in French, half English. Um, and so we talked about rat crimes. We witnessed like someone biting into a cookie and there was a rat bone in there and it was horrible. Or like, what else? I forget what the other rat crimes were, but it's kind of, it's half reality, half not. We ask our friends to contribute. We mail it to people, we try to keep it all like analog we have a website to subscribe but we don't have social media it's kind of just a nice way to keep in touch with people while also making something um, and then on the right yeah that is me and Vale long ago in an elevator in Belgium when we were going to teach a class somewhere but I met him as an intern because I wanted to just learn about zines and 
then we ended up being in Europe and he took me to help him with this book tour. And while we were together, I was like, your life should be a comic. It's so crazy and like t twists and turns and tragic and hilarious. And anyway, so we started to make them and that's like a page, a page right there where he's talking about the inspirational movements that, or you know, the cultural movements that inspired him, um, which have now inspired me because I've spent a lot of time with Vail. And I've gone, I have my own interests, but um, yeah, so we've been working on this biography for a long time. I like to make little short zines of the comics I make because they're very long interviews transcribed. And then I'd have to try to fit the whole interview into drawings and it takes a really long time, but I've learned so much about the Bay Area and like what punk was in the 70s, what it is now and kind of its flaws and its powers and just the DIY kind of world has a flame that keeps moving around. And that's kind of what I'm fascinated by and why zines zines mean so much to me and then the next one the next slide is uh me and my friend Sabine that I met when I did this comics masters which was all because I started making zines a few years before but I met Sabine there she came to Oakland and we just went around and um when I came back from France after the school I kind of got really involved in the music scene, was in a band, touring around, like really got to know all the little um, special pockets of music and art and community. And I wanted us to go around and interview everyone, but it was also, you know, everything is so tumultuous and unstable here and expensive. So it was kind of like, it was called Future Ruins Seeds in the Wind because <laughs> it was like, everything kind of felt like it was about to become a ruin or some secret house venue was going to get shut down or someone was going to move away. So I was like, we have to talk to a lot of people and just get a slice of what is here now. Um, I don't know if any of these, but I don't know. Yeah, my KQW system of, of drawing, mystify, demystify, and remystify is what I've learned from doing all these things. It's just like, if something piques your interest, explore it until you get bored and then kind of scramble it up again until it interests you again and then keep going. So the world never can really bore you if you keep turning it around and looking at different angles. Um, how am I doing on time? I don't see notifications. So we'll go to the next slide. Oh, wonderful, six minutes. <sighs> so I guess these were kind of the things I learned from living life and using and kind of following and using zines to get into new environments and places um, and to meet new people and like be excited about uh, you know, standing up to bad, to abuses of power or, you know, uh, talking about shared experiences that we don't see everywhere. And I think that, uh, yeah, my favorite thing I'm doing now that I've, that was made possible by zines is that I help lay out the newsletter for ABO Comics, which publishes exclusively art comics writing by LGBTQ people in prison. And I mean, getting to look at that art is really special and it's so amazing. And I like to create this publication that reaches the artists and share resources with them. And yeah, kind of get to have these cartoonists that uh, share work with us and we help them and send money back and it's really awesome but yeah zines have led to that they led to I got to teach a cartoon newsroom class where I made newsletters with kids and their comics were amazing I wish that this image were easier to read um, 
And then the Short Run Comics Festival in Seattle uh, invited me to do this residency where we all stayed in trailers. And I don't know, <laughs> sometimes it's cool. There's lots of um, wonderful people to meet and spaces that are trying to encourage zinesters and people to meet and be together. And yeah, the rest of this flyers for my dog fashion show, some blankets, clothes I made, just ways drawing has made my life really special. And I've met so many wonderful people. Uh, what else? I don't know, zines are, I don't know who I would even be without them. I was realizing that when I was doing this today, I was like, wow, that was cool. Thanks, zines. <laughs> So uh, maybe that's the end of my presentation. I don't think I have any more slides. Um. <laughs> yeah, I guess I got to do, oh. Yeah, that was amazing. Wow. I feel like I learned so much more about you and I want to continue to ask and learn so much more. <laughs> wow. Yes, everybody who's tuning in right now and who will tune into this in the future, give it up for Krusty We Feel. Yes. Um, now we're going to hear from Elise Bernal. So I'm going to go ahead and spotlight you. All right, hi everyone. Thanks for coming on this afternoon. Um, I just wanna give a shout out to Brianna for putting this together and also to Berkeley Public Library and Casey for all their help with it. Um, today, I just wanted to share a little bit about how I got into zines and then, and parts of how I like started organizing and then also just share about my personal process and hopefully share some examples of zines that can kind of inspire you um, to create um, in the future. So yeah, so this slide kind of shows um, my favorite part of zines, which is the community and being able to travel. Um, when I first went to a zine fest, I got really inspired, but I actually thought that I wasn't like cool enough to make zines because <laughs> I didn't really know the history, but the further I got into it, it made me realize that anyone can make them. And it's really about channeling the things that you're really passionate about and sharing your story in a lot of ways. So um, I included this image by the artist Yumi Sakagawa because I remember seeing their work at a zine fest and just really resonating with it. And, you know, the illustrations were simple and a lot of their work focused on just self-care and self-help and like navigating life and anxiety. So it may, it really like inspired me to make my own zines because those were things that I've been wanting to share. So yeah, after that, I kind of just started messing around and experimenting and making different types of zines and kinds of zines. And then I started like tabling places. So these are some examples of places I tabled. Um, the top one is in at Tijuana Zine Fest and the lower ones at LA Zine Fest. So I've been to quite a few places thanks to zines and um, the community that comes with it is really special. So that's something that is, yeah, is probably my favorite part. I've met so many people that are now some of my best friends, um, including Brianna, who organized this. <laughs> I've not, I met her through scenes, actually, which is awesome. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that, you know, you can kind of start wherever you are. And as long as you have something in mind that you want to share, you can share it. Um, so I'll go to the next slide. So um, after I started making zines in Tableline, I met a lot of people along the way. And I met um, my friend Emily, who's in the lower 
right corner. Um, we just put out an open call to people who wanted to try to organize for the Long Beach Zine Fest, which was where I was working at the time. And I love the city. The city has so many artists and we decided to kind of gather people and try to make a zine fest. So the lower right corner photo is the first year we did the zine fest. That's the organizing team that we got together to help us uh, run it. And we had it at a local museum. And these, I wanted to share some photos from the zine fest because you could kind of see all the different types of art that are there and people. And it's really a space to connect. Um, the first year was pretty successful. We had over a hundred artists and um, we had live music and food and it was a really great way to kind of make space for the community to be seen and to be heard um, in a local space. So that was kind of my favorite part about it. Um, yeah, and it really inspired me to um, keep supporting Zine Fest because it's a really important space for people, um, like I said, to be heard and to be seen. Um, yeah, and then I kept making zines and eventually, um, just due to personal reasons, I stopped organizing for the Long Beach Zine Fest. But then um, later on, more recently, I worked at the Anaheim Public Library and got a help with the OC Zine Fest and some of the circulating zine collection there, which if you're not sure what that is, I know Ziva for sure will talk more about it. So I'll just share those little tidbits about organizing and zine fest. So I could go to the next slide. Okay, so now I'll share a little bit just about my personal art practice. Um, for me, zines have been a way to kind of heal and process some of the things that have happened in my life. So um, in 2013, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And during that time, I had so many just questions about what we were, what we were going through and like how to navigate. And I had no idea where to start and how to like support her. So I did a lot of research and just asked a lot of questions. And um, during that time, I created this scene kind of based on the information and resources that I found through that research and through asking questions. So this seems really special because I have a short interview with my mom in it, which is cool, but it kind of just puts together all of the things that I personally learned and all of the things I learned from other people into kind of a zine format. And um, what I also love about zines is they're kind of, the way that you can exchange and share them is really up to you. So anytime I was at Zine Fest and I would share this zine or someone was interested in it, I would always offer it for free, but I would just ask that they would tell me who it was for. And just by asking that question, it was really helpful for myself because I'd often um, see people or meet people who had the same experiences as me or who were trying to to support someone with cancer or had cancer themselves and wanted to read more about the resources that were out there. So for me, that's the special part of zines is you kind of get a, by sharing something from maybe your personal experience, you get to connect with other people who have the same experience. And for me, that's kind of a way that I like process and heal and kind of navigate through life. So. Um, that's been a really special part of zines and it's a really good starting point for if you're making your own zines, just finding, um, information or, you know, starting with a question and being like, I really want to answer this question and kind of creating a zine around that. And so at the same time, you're making work that helps you answer your own question. You're also kind of making space for others to find information in the future. So that's kind of my favorite, I guess, in a way, like type of zine. <laughs> um, so I go to the next slide. Okay. Um, so this zine that I made is called Lost and Found. And so the, the left side is a cover. And this kind of talked about the other end of the journey with my mom because she ended up 
um, passing away about five years later. So um, the first half of the zine is focused on caretaking for those who are terminally ill. And then the second half um, are interviews and resources about navigating life after you lose the person. So for these particular ones, I shared this image on the right hand side that um, shares about or shares interviews with people who I asked about how they navigated loss. So these are just kind of shorter answers that people replied to the question with. And, you know, during the time when I was making this, this asking those questions really helped me to kind of understand how people even think about losing someone close to them. And I was able to put them together to kind of create this resource for other people. So this was a project that felt both very like gratifying for myself and in, in like processing loss and kind of, you know, figuring out what I needed, but it also um, gave me a lot of space to connect with others who have lost somebody. So yeah, it was just like a such an awesome process to make it because I feel like even to this day, I go back to it and kind of look at it. And I'm like, oh, this is helpful when I'm feeling like a moment of sadness or grief. It really helps to um, make me feel better and like supported by all the different perspectives that um, that are around and out there. So, um, so yeah, that was really special. Um, yeah, I'll go to the next slide. Okay, so for this slide on the left, um, I have an image from the same zine, The Lost and Found. And this image is called, it's, it's a comic called New Life. And it talks about, you know, after loss, like kind of having um, a new perspective of someone's presence or existence. So I just wanted to share this because it's, it's also a, a cool format to use for zines because you can kind of include text and images. And also just is one of my favorite <laughs> pieces from the book. So I wanted to share that. To the right is um, my personal newsletter called Plantita. Um, so I made this, I think starting a few years ago and I try to send it out about four times a year but this was just kind of a zine style newsletter, similar to, to Krusty's, but I would send it out just to close families and family and friends. And yeah, in it, I would just include reflections about life and what I was going through at the time. And also um, like friendship spotlights, I would highlight like friends and give updates about personal projects or family or like book recommendations. So this is a way to keep in touch with people. Um, and also it helped to like process and have conversations during the pandemic when there was a lot of um, just heaviness with death and loss and also um, with a lot of the, the movements that were happening at the time. So. Yeah, I feel like this gave me a space to have a lot of personal conversations, but also share just like how I was processing that whole time. So um, yeah, I wanted to also, oh, it's okay, you can stay on that slide. <laughs> I just wanted to share about the, the newsletter that this is a good way if you don't feel like sharing your work with other people, you know, just you can make it for yourself or your friends. And that's a totally valid, form of zine making is making it for yourself or, or for people you care about and not necessarily like sharing it with everyone. So uh, I just wanted to say that, but you can go to the next slide. Um, so this was just another example of a, a short interview zine that I did. Um, this one asked, how do you find balance and happiness on a daily basis and what do you fight for? And so these were just shorter answer um, questions that I put in a zine. And 
Yeah, I really enjoyed doing this project because it's something that you can kind of keep with you and think about later when you're having like a hard day. I feel like a lot of my scenes focus on that, just kind of reminders that people are experiencing the same thing and that um, you can you can think about other people's stories and, and their own like ways of navigating to maybe support you in different ways. Um, and yeah, and it's also, I think, a form of information because you're interviewing people and you're getting perspectives from friends and your community to kind of help support other people. And I think that that's why this form of Z making is so important to me because I still remember um, the first time I found more of like a informational or research based zine. Um, it, it was focused on like asexuality. And I remember finding that zine and just thinking like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what this word is because my family never talked about these things. And so it gave me like a, a space to, to understand something and really relate to something. So I think that's what's so special about the community is you can find answers to questions and the whole space of the Zine Fest is also just really kind of affirming and special. Um, so yeah, I'll go to the next slide. I have one minute left. So this is just another example of a zine that I made and I'll go to the next slide. I just wanted to share this slide um, to kind of show how many different kinds of formats there are. So if you're interested in making different kinds of scenes, um, the, the possibilities are kind of limitless. You can kind of cut and paste as, as you want and just experiment. So I think I probably am at my time. So I'm just gonna say, I hope that this was helpful and just make zines, even if you're not sure what to talk about, just kind of share your story and something special will come out and you'll be able to connect with other people, which I think is the core of what zines are for. So, okay, thank you. Wow, yeah, let's give at least a round of applause wherever you are in the universe right now. I wasn't planning on like, coming in after each person shared, but I'm just so overwhelmed with like how amazing everybody everybody is. So um, yeah, I'm gonna spotlight Ziba and we are gonna hear all about Ziba's work with zines in the world. Thank you for sharing Elise and Krusty and also Brianna, thank you for hosting this great event. And everyone, thank you for joining us today for your hour, Tuesday, 4 to 5 p.m. Thank you, Berkeley Public Library. Okay, I'm Ziva, and I have a zine I make called Zebra Radar Zine. I've been doing zines since 2012 officially, so since 10 years ago, although I was first introduced to zines in the 90s in high school at Long Beach Poly High School. I'm from Long Beach, California. My um, friend was making a zine called Luna and Tuna and had their friends participate by creating jokes or recipes or movie reviews and different things. So that's how I first got introduced to it. And then I um, applied for a booth at the first Los Angeles Zine Fest to table in 2012 with my friend Rena and my other friend Simon. So the three of us together table, shared a table and we were called Three Amigos Press. So next slide, please. This is the three of us at the Los Angeles Zine Fest in 2012 at the last bookstore of downtown LA. And there's my volume one of Zebra Radar Zine. I had a friend do the cover for me and that's a example of the inside of my zine it was more of a scrapbook style. I really just used a scrapbook that I had been making for three years and I just scanned it and shrunk it down because this was originally eight and a half by 11 scrapbook and I made it um, like a quarter page and I did mostly just black and white so it was more affordable to sell and um, so that's us tabling and between the three of us, uh, mine sold the least. 
I could tell they really liked zines with a lot of text, like original text from the zine maker. And mine was more scrapbooky. That's just what I realized that first year. Uh, next slide, please. In my professional career, I'm a public librarian. I started having zines at the library in my first position, which was with the Orange County Public Library System and the Costa Mesa branch. I brought zines there through zine workshops and zine displays, as you can see on the right. And I was in OC Weekly to see about getting zines circulating in OC Public Library System, which they said no, they didn't want to be the first in Southern California to go through that process. So. Then I was promoted to senior librarian with Long Beach Public Library in 2015, and they already wanted to have zines circulating. So that was the first in Southern California at a public library that had zines circulating for free with your library card, as you can see in the bottom left corner. And then we have a zine bike at the top left corner. The speed reader was a bike I got with a grant of $5,000 to bring zines to the community as outreach originally a book bike but when I would take it out it would be a zine bike so I would take it to coffee shops and art walks in Long Beach. Uh, Long Beach is my hometown born and raised Long Beach California. Uh, next slide and everywhere I travel I look for zines so um, bottom left is some zines from Cuba but they're more like cartoneros so like art books on recycled cardboard and I purchased those with um, money from Long Beach Zine Fest as well as Long Beach Public Library. They gave me a budget to look for zines to add to the collection. And Long Beach Zine Fest would donate the zines to the Long Beach Public Library zine collection. So it's really great when a zine fest and a public library can partner, which we do here. I currently work for the Los Angeles Public Library System. And so we partnered with Los Angeles Zine Fest before I joined them. And we had donations of zines from their zine library to the public library so they could be cataloged and circulating on lapl.org slash zines, you can see everything that's cataloged and circulating and have it sent to your local library within the city of Los Angeles. Another zine um, library thing I help with is Zine Pavilion every year. And this picture at the middle is from Washington, DC, the American Library Association annual conference in 2018. And that a zine pavilion is kind of like a zine fest within the library conference and this is um, a visitor to the zine table it's the librarian of congress carla hayden so i was very excited when when carla came by our zine tables and then mexico city I always go to cafeleria to look for zines in spanish i really like having um bilingual zines and zines in Spanish in the public library. And then Portland, Oregon, they have a nice zine collection. And that librarian there said they collect zines that are not found as subjects in books. So before there were vegan cookbooks, they would purchase vegan zines. And so they wouldn't just add any zine to their collection. They just wanted a specific type. Uh, next slide, slide, please. These are examples of some of my zines. So on the right, you'll see more on my scrapbook style. And Zebra Radar is a nickname I had in high school. I gave myself as a username for the AOL Instant Messenger. Um, my um, maiden name, Zebra Zadar, would rhyme with Zebra Radar. And I had a radar for zebra since I was in kindergarten and people would mistake my name zebra for zebra. So I started just collecting all images of zebras. And so I just do like scrapbook style of things I like. So I like Pee Wee Herman, I like B-52s. And so that's on the right and on the left was some movie review haikus I did. So this is when I was a public librarian for the Costa Mesa branch in Orange County. And I did some whiteboard drawings of films that I would show in the library. So Pee Wee's Big Adventure, 1985, directed by Tim Burton. And my haiku movie review was, I love Pee Wee most, Red Bicycle Alamo, Dottie is Beauty. And on, then I did Spanish films too, like um, Film Club in Spanish, Hable Le Con Ella by Pedro Almodovar. And that was um, 
Almodóvar sí, divertido España. Quiero ir pronto. Okay, next slide, please. Um, here's a couple pages from when I tabled um, San Francisco Zine Fest, and this zine was a specific topic. They had a a zine library, a community zine library in San Francisco that was all about sex. So they wanted a zine with the topic of sex. So I tried to look for images and words that I could use in a zine to donate to that specific zine library. And that's what this one is. Uh, next slide, please. And then this one is a tribute zine. So I made a tribute zine for my grandmother in Iran. I interviewed my father about my grandmother. And so those are the notes is my interview. I asked my father about my grandmother. She has passed. And so these are pictures of my grandmother and she's from Iran, so food and, and her job was a seamstress, so different things. And I made this zine because I was also teaching um, teens how to make their own tribute zine because they did some interviews with elders in the community specific to the garment district and they wanted to make a tribute zine to the elders that were still alive and so not exactly like this but similar uh, next slide please thank you that is all hey excellent okay so let's get into q a mode Okay, so I am going to get us all back up here. Um, cool. So we did get some questions that came in. Uh, <laughs> Ziba, amazing. I'm so inspired by all of you here today. I'm just like in awe. Uh, again, like just finding myself wanting to learn even more about your work. Um, you know, given that I've met all of you like through zines and have known you all for various amounts of time, but I'm just so like overwhelmed with like inspiration and like wanting to learn more. Um, so let's take a look at the, um, the Q and A. So we have, uh, this is a great question. Um, uh, someone asks everybody here, what do you eat when you're making zines? Uh, Christy, do you want to start us off with this answer? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I eat grapes if I have them. I like like small things I can just continuously sneak into my mouth <laughs> or coffee, lots of coffee or cheese. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> delicious how about Elise do you eat anything when you make zines um I don't think I have a specific thing but I feel like I just think about all these times when I was like rushing the night before zine fest to like finish folding stuff and get everything ready and just like eating a bunch of like snacks and sweets to kind of like hold me over while I'm stressed out. <laughs> so I'll just, that's the thing I think about. <laughs> yeah, that's a great answer. That, that's so true, like that zine fest rush, you know, um, the, the night before at the coffee shop or also at the Berkeley Public Library. Just the, I wanna remind folks that you can get free five copies a day. So if you have a one page zine, you can make five copies of your mini zine every day that were open if you'd like, or, um, you know, kind of like print, get those free five copies as part of our resource. Come inside the library. Um, how about you, Ziba? Do you eat anything when you make zines? Well, I drink a lot of iced coffee and then I'll eat anything, but I'll try to have it not be too messy. So not anything like, um, hot flaming hot cheetos because then your fingers will get it all unless you want to add that to the art of your zine which you could do yeah it's so true <laughs> okay let's see um we have okay we have a question for elise that asks elise what size are the zines you showed in your presentation Oh, sure. Yeah. 
They're all various sizes. Um, I do have some with me so I can kind of share a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure if you could see it because, oh, okay. Now I see myself so I can kind of share. So this one is from the Lost and Found. This size is um, an 11 by 17 paper folded in half. So it's like eight and a half by 11 when it's folded in half. Um, what else I have? Some of the other zines that I included are really tiny. So this one is like the same format as um, a one sheet of paper, but it's just a fourth of that paper. So if I open it, you could kind of see that it's just a square and then folded. So it's a quarter of a eight and a half by 11 paper. <laughs> and then I also had some that were just like, um, like the single sheet papers. This one's a little different because I like uh, bound it by cutting up eight and a half by 11 sheets into fourths and then kind of layering it into a book. So those are some examples and let's see what else I got. This one is like a, these are, I think this one's like 11 by 17 folded the same way as an eight and a half by 11, if that makes sense. So it's one 11 by 17 folded in the same way. And um, I also have like a little, I think this is half a piece of paper. So, but it's just, um, I call it like the hot dog style of the paper. So it's the long ways and then folded like a regular zine. So those are some examples of what I showed in the the presentation. So there are a lot of different ways you can you can fold and bind things, which is really fun to kind of experiment. I think the more I've made zines, I've just like learned along the way. That's excellent. I'm so that's so dope that you have the had the examples there with you so we could see. Thank you so much, Elise. We have another question that's more of like logistical where it's like um where do you find materials when making your zines? Let's see, does anybody want to, to go first? Maybe, maybe like, let's have Ziba go first. Yeah. Oh, I get them from discarded books as well as donated vintage magazines. I was really lucky as a librarian in Costa Mesa, I had a donation of Life magazine from the 70s and 60s. So I got to use a lot of vintage retro ads and that those were the best scrapbooking materials for zines. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. How about you, Christy? Where do you find materials to make zines? I was nodding with agreement. I mean, I don't I don't work at a library, so I don't, I don't get access to just any discarded books, but I'm always looking around at the piles of stuff that people are like leaving on the curb or like old National Geographic's or estate sales. There's just so much like art supply and collage material for free or very cheap. At least in Oakland and I think lots of places, um, most people are trying to get rid of their old magazines. <laughs> so yeah, just looking around. Yeah, excellent. How about you, Elise? Do you have any um, anything to contribute? Where to find materials? Yeah, um, well, most of my zines are illustrated. So I would just say that in a way, my materials are kind of like um, the interviews that I do. So I just like try to ask questions. I like asking questions to people. And then I like compile information like that. So yeah, I would say most of my materials are like either things that I just draw or uh, from interviewing people or, or I guess with other zines like the cancer care, it kind of comes from resources that I've done research on. So kind of a combination of all three of those. Awesome. Thank you all. Those are really, really great answers and very helpful when trying to source materials to get started, right? We have another question that's like more technical, um, where someone asks, um, I'm curious about the technical aspects of producing a zine. Do you photocopy and fold? 
or photocopy and cut or print and staple. Um, they're curious about the range of possibilities. Is there like kind of like a go-to um, technical aspect that um, you all kind of lean towards or that you'd like to share with anybody tuning in today? I'm trying to think who, is anybody who, maybe raise your hand if you're like, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, Elise, yeah. Um, I, I just kind of go with what I'm feeling for the particular zine. So, um, for some of them, I, I do binding, like either sewing on the machine or sewing by hand. And usually I do those with like the larger zines because for a while I didn't have a long arm stapler. So I would just like do that as a way to keep them together. Um, so that's kind of one of my go-tos if I'm, if I'm having to like attach multiple sheets together. Um, you can kind of see like in one of the zines I have that it's like sewn. Um, but for the rest of it, it's kind of just like I illustrate and either directly on the paper, I'm gonna photocopy and then photocopy it that way. Or if I mess up, I'll just like um, tape and, or I'll just like paste over where I messed up and then photocopy it when I'm done that way. So it's kind of a combination of like cut and paste um, or like sewing. Yeah, there's, yeah, there is a lot of different um, options for it. I've seen people use like rubber bands to hold together all their pages um, or use like fabric for their covers. So you can kind of just experiment. I think that's what's the fun part about it. And like all the mini zines that I made, I feel like all of them came from just like playing around with the paper and kind of seeing what worked for what I wanted to make. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. That was so excellent. We have a lot of questions. Um, it is at five o'clock. Is everybody okay with staying maybe like 10 more minutes to answer some more questions? Like, like we'll definitely cut it off at 15 minutes after. But yes. that's how we feel. Sounds good, good to me. Awesome. Okay, cool. So we have, let's see, this is a cool question. It says, um, what if you feel like you aren't the best drawer or artist, but you really want to make zines? Does anybody have any advice um, to kind of just, yeah. Does anybody want to answer that one? Yes. I am not an artist. I am, now I am, but I wasn't when I first purchased a zine fest table 10 years ago. I thought, oh, I'm not creative like that. And so, I just used what I had, which is my scrapbook, basically like a purse and like a journal and cut and paste is easy to layer and have fun. And um, so I didn't worry about it. And then later I decided, let me just doodle and draw anyways. And then that's part of a zine is having it not be perfect. So I just started drawing zebras that didn't really look like zebras. and little by little they got better. So I just say, go for it. Thank you. That's great. Does anybody else want to speak to that one? I just wanted to like echo Ziba because I think when I first started making scenes, I also wasn't a great drawer, but the more I made them, it was like more practice. And I feel like it's helped me to grow my style a lot too. So I feel like if you're interested in drawing, but don't feel like you're the best, I would just keep practicing and putting it out there because everyone's style is like really unique. And I think some people will resonate with what you're making, even if you feel like you're not the greatest at it. There's, I think there's beauty in that. And I think that's what zines are about kind of just sharing like where you're at and and yeah how you see the world so yeah that's great how about you Christy do you want to add anything to that I didn't hear the first part of the question but I think I 
could you repeat it? Yeah, for sure. It says, what if you feel like you aren't the best drawer or artist, but you really want to make zines? Okay. Well, yeah. I think one, zine, zines don't have to have drawing necessarily. And you don't have, you can collage, you can just write or just scribble decorative scribbles. But also I agree with both of the other artists, like just keep going, just keep, even if you don't like, it's not gonna ever be perfect the first time, but you can like enjoy how un imperfect the drawing is and how it's like a record of your attempt to draw something. So I feel like it's just the line, just keep going. That's all, I think. Yeah, I love that. I wanna, I love that quote. Um, how about this question? Um, there's a lot of questions that kind of um, are asking more technical, like how, how to make zines, which is really exciting. Um, can't wait to see, you know, folks making more zines, whether they share them with um, us, you know, in the community or just with their own loved ones or themselves. But there's another question that says, is there anything you had to buy to make it easier or more fun to make zines? like something that you couldn't find for free or by borrowing. Let's start off with Ziba. Oh uh, yes, a long arm stapler, which I would, uh, yeah, I didn't have anywhere to borrow it. So I finally purchased one and I think it was over $40 at the time. So it's a good investment. Thank you. Yeah, does anybody else have anything to add? Yeah, so yeah, I was just gonna say, um, I, I actually don't think so. I think if you just have paper and ideas, you can, you can kind of make whatever you want. And that's the cool part about it. I feel like you don't have to have a lot of materials. You just have to kind of have ideas and be able to express them in whatever way you want. So yeah, that's what I would say, because that's the thing that drew me to it, because a lot of times it didn't have a lot of space or a lot of like resources. So zines were just a way to just like express myself. And you can just have like a piece of paper and a thing to draw with and then make your make it out of that. And yeah, so that's my thought on it. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Do you have anything to add, Christy, or should we try another question? I guess not really. I, I mean, I, right, I agree that like a long arm stapler is super useful and great when you have one. I lost mine so long ago, but I'm still making them. <laughs> but I think, yeah, friend, friends with printing capabilities, but you can't right. buy them. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of uh, leads into this other question that's another technical question, but it's how do you make multiple copies of your zines? Do you go to a printing shop, you know, if you don't have a printer? Um, maybe we can share some like Bay Area resources if possible, or just like over the years of making zines, what you kind of like, I guess, like to reduce any barriers, right? If you don't have a printer, like where, how can you print copies of your zines? Yeah, I'll start again. So I would go back in the day to Kinko's and then it was uh, the FedEx. It's just anything, I'll just look where's the closest one and I'll go there and it'll take a lot of trial and error because I'll have to scan it and then double side it and then print it. So I'll give myself many hours before the zine fest to get my final copies out. That's all. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Ziva. Yeah, and then Chrissy, let's hear what you have to say too. I'm curious, you know, like you living in very, very close, like to the Berkeley Public Library, like in the general neighborhood, um, you know, I'm also curious if you know of any groups or places that can support people who want to make zines or even like contribute uh, continue to learn more about zines, like um, probably like adjacent to Berkeley, Oakland, just Bay Area in general, it would be excellent to hear about. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking first of Tiny Splendor, and they have 
they're actually in LA too, but they have like a risograph. They have a lot of more like printmaking capabilities, but they have so much knowledge about, you know, publications, zines, paper, print, which is all things like that. I think the Berkeley Art Museum has a cool art lab that I haven't been to, um, but it seems really cool. And I, I know they have a risograph. Um, Irrelevant Press works with artists and helps them print like more books or they like they print they print all my squander less and they have a spiral binder which i in lots of different colors which i like a lot and what else i have to think but already that and then berkeley public library itself uh seems to have photocopying and different zine resources that are awesome. Yeah, okay, that's all. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, just to remind folks that um, you can print out five pages a day at the Berkeley Public Library for free. After that, it's 15 cents per page. Uh, we also just um, introduced a free little zine library here in the teen room at the Central Library. So if you want to um, add your zine into just a community, you know, a little free library zone, um, it's not circulating in the collection, no barcode or anything yet, but it's a free little zone to kind of like get your work out there. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I actually wanted to ask everybody this question. Um, out of pure curiosity, what's the most experimental the most challenging or like the most different thing you've ever done in your zine making process does anybody want to start us off with that kind of loaded question <laughs> yeah let's hear from you Cressy. thanks i made this a research zine called fact totem pole a long long time ago but everyone we like put a special strange gift in the back. So it'd be like a patch or like a lock of hair or like a fake dollar bill. And then we like tied it all together, like gift. Well, that took a really long time, but I still ha I have an unopened one that I'm really wanting to open soon, but it was fun and, and laborious. Um, yeah. <laughs> That sounds awesome. I wish you got a copy of one of those. <laughs> Let's see. Does anybody else want to take this question on? Okay, yeah, let's hear from you, Elise. Thank you. Um, I guess mine is similar to Krusty's. Um, when I made the loss and found scene, it was like right after my mom died. So I feel like that was probably the most like layered time. <laughs> and kind of putting it all together was really helpful for me to process a lot of what I was feeling at the time. But it was also really hard to kind of think um, think about like what happened. So um, yeah, so I feel like it was a mix of feeling like, oh, this is awesome because I get to connect with people, but also like feeling kind of sad as I was processing what happened at the same time, so. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing and just like another thank you too for, you know, doing that work and it's, it's so beneficial to folks right who have access to that now and can read your experience and all the resources and perspective and re like experiences that you've gathered right. So yeah, thank you. How about you Zila, do you have a super experimental challenging different thing? <laughs> what <was he> <laughs> Um, just when you, there's a specific topic that you have to incorporate in your zine, so the one for the San Francisco Zine Library, uh, I forgot the name of the community zine library, but it was like the, the library of sex or something, and so that was the topic, so that was just, I mean, a little challenging just looking for items to cut out that would relate to a specific topic uh, that's all yeah that's true yeah and i think folks too if you're like online or if you're in out in the world you'll see that there's like 
zine challenges, right? Where like there's different prompts or like it's challenging you to read like a certain or make a certain style of zine. So yeah, that's definitely challenging if that's not a type of zine you've made before. Um, this other question is kind of along that line. So it asks, do you have like a favorite genre or like kind of zine to read? And does that kind of zine, is it different from the zines that you make? You know, does that make sense? Does anybody want to share? Let's go to you from Ziba. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I really like zines that take the extra step to go out and um, interview their favorite bands. So I've seen some fanzines that go, I don't know how they get in touch with their favorite band, but that's something I've always um, wanted to do. So you'd have to really, I mean, if they're really a big band, you'd have to really know if they're, I mean, if they're still around. So those are the kind of zines I like. I would like, I like to read the, the most, but um, I haven't made any like that yet. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Does anybody else want to answer this one? And then we'll just do one more question because we could be here all night. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, let's hear from you, Elise. Thanks. Um, I think my favorite zines to read are similar to what I make. I tend to really like things where there's like interviews with different people in different communities and um, just like personal, kind of more like per zines, like personal zines where people reflect on their life and experiences. Yeah, like one of my favorites is this one called Dear Daughter and the zine kind of talks about um, things that the person who wrote it would would kind of hear from their mom if their mom was still alive. So it kind of reflects on, I don't know, it's just kind of like motivating and sentimental at the same time. I think I like scenes that are like sentimental or kind of uh, more personal. Um, yeah, yeah. Another example is probably the zine that's about, the person interviewed different people about heartbreak and loss. And so it's like people reflecting on their experience with that. So yeah, I think I tend to like things that are more tender. <laughs> yeah, that's great, thank you. Yeah, so let's hear from Christy and then we'll have our last question too. I feel like I kind of read the same. I like to read like personal historical narratives but I also really like comics, like compilations like there's freak comics or cowlick comics or yeah just like the new freaky weirdos drawing and making zines together uh, yeah it inspires me too yeah oh yay i know and i want to like read all these zines that you know just talked about so our last question is kind of like that whole like let's tie things up type of thing but it's like um I guess some people call it the rose and the thorn or something like that, but I'm just super curious like to hear from each of you, what is your, and it might be hard to pick one thing, but like what is like your favorite thing about making zines coupled with like what's your least favorite thing about making zines? Cause there's like dualities in, in everything in life, right? So I'm curious about that. And then um, we can share everybody's uh, social so people can follow you and keep supporting your work yeah that's your from easy but thanks well you're welcome um, my favorite thing is similar to what Elise mentioned earlier is community so going to zine fest and meeting other zine makers and zine fest organizers and just traveling all over up and down the coast to to do that and then my least favorite thing is I guess the loss of profit since it's not a business, it's a hobby for me. So I'll be printing and want to do some in color, but then it is ex can get expensive. So that's my my least favorite part of zine making is the, the capitalism part. And that's all. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ziva. Really good answer. Such goods and such such yeses and aw oh, man at the same time. <laughs> Does anybody else want to answer this one? Okay, yeah, let's, let's hear from you, Elise. Oh, okay. Um so I was gonna share that. Similar to Ziva, my favorite part is the community because I've met so many awesome people who are just like genuinely awesome humans that I continue to be able to have in my life, which is awesome. And then um, on the opposite side, I feel like sometimes when I table at ZineFest, I get so overwhelmed because I'm, I feel like I'm more of an introverted person by heart. So I feel really exhausted after <laughs> talking to a lot of people and having to, to like um, continue to talk about like what I'm making. So that for me is probably like the hardest part, but um, yeah, but I, but I also feel like it's the meeting new people is also a great part. So I feel like there's, it's good and bad for both of those pieces. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's important to like kind of remember all of these things. And yay, Chrissy, let's hear, let's hear your answer too. I'm super excited to hear. Uh, yeah, I think my favorite part is all the unpredictable relationships and just things that making a zine and sharing it and meeting other people can lead to. And I feel like my least favorite part is like laying it out and trying to think in spatial mathematical page book yeah it's been I've been making them since like 2011 and I still get confused but it's also fine <laughs> it's just part of it so and sometimes you make cool mistakes or like weird layout magic <laughs> so yeah thanks yeah that's awesome um super good point too about laying it out I know that there's um there's typically like an interest in seeing how to lay out zines on a computer as well. So um, it might be cool to see if the library can offer some kind of like uh, presentation or maybe like a workshop on how to do that. Um, Cause I know it's like a whole nother like skill set, like incorporating like technology computers into laying out zines. And yeah, I was just like, I don't know if we have the time to get into that unfortunately in this session, but that's definitely like, something that I would love to open up for discussion or just go share as well. Um, but yeah, so I just want to thank, um, thank you all so much for sharing your work with us today. Um, so inspiring and just like, I'm just in awe, you know, of you all and I appreciate your time so much and like just thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of me on behalf of the public library and on behalf of everybody who's tuning in um, live right now and who will tune in in the future. Um, I also wanted to remind folks that uh, today's presentation was recorded and we will be posting this video to the Berkeley Public Library's YouTube channel to share. So yeah, you can share this with friends and family, community members. Um, you can also rewatch it whenever you want to um, get re-inspired and learn some more. Just revisit what we've talked about today. Um, you can see here on our last page, uh, we have the uh, social media handles of everybody that was in the panel today and also uh, for the Berkeley Public Library. So yeah, thanks again to the Berkeley Public Library friends for making this event possible for um, for Ziba, Elise, Cressy, everybody that was here, for Casey for helping with our tech background stuff um, and helping us get set up and going. Uh, thank you all so much. Yeah, this was great. Hope we can do this again and you know maybe we'll all see each other out in the world at a zine fest because you know we know how we like to travel up and down California, sharing our work and being at all the different zine events. So. Happy International Zine Month, everyone. Thank you so much for turning, tuning in. And um, you are all amazing. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing. Thank this you. Screen. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, friends.
so cool. All right. 